Good morning, everybody. Yeah, I was going to try and stream this, but apparently I am the dumb once again because I haven't been doing videos in quite a while. So, um, hi. It's been a while since I've done a little vlog with you guys, isn't it? Um, as you can see, I have housemates. Um, you just saw the butt of Oscar. He's my orange and white. Um, you should see my gray and white come through here soon. Her name is Joy. Um, excuse me. It is uh, like quarter after six in the morning. And there they go. Um, so it is quite, quite early for a lot of people. I've actually been up for a little over half an hour, uh, which is pretty standard for me. Um, I'm kind of clicking around here for a second just to catch myself up. I have not done a proper vlog since September. Okay, of last year. And I've only done a handful of Minecraft videos since then. So, I I'm going to do I'm going to do a catch up with you guys. Um so, y'all know I'm in Ohio. Y'all know I moved here because of Dia and uh, Fat Russian. Uh, I don't speak with either of them anymore. Um, Dia was my choice. Fat Russian was his. Um, to be more specific, Dia made her choice of partner, and I, um, I was not comfortable with that choice, so I walked away. Um, and mm, Fat Russian never made the choice. His family made it for him. So I kind of felt like I'd gotten cut loose here shortly after I'd gotten here into the very beginning of the new year. I had my feet knocked out from underneath me pretty hard um, because I had trusted these two people to be my people um, here on the ground. Um, the upside is I have met some phenomenal folk that are neither uh, Fat Russian nor Dia, um, and that's good. Um, and don't misunderstand me. Um, I wish all of the things that they deserve in this life to come their way. That's the nicest thing I can say. I'm, I am and probably will be for some time quite hurt by both situations. Um, and that's neither here nor there. That's my problem. Um, I don't expect either of them to step up and take any responsibility in it at all. Um, that's my feelings. So, but I have met some great folks through the church that I attend. I have, uh, I actually uh, met a really pretty phenomenal person on a street corner because for anybody who knows me, there's actually kind of a history with me meeting people on the street. Um, so I've got a new friend that um, I got to meet a couple of months ago that um, just kind of walked up to me while I was hanging out downtown, started a conversation with me, and we've been talking ever since. Um, I've met another really phenomenal person in the elevator of the building I live in, <clears throat> and um, we've become pretty close friends as well, which is really nice. Um, and most importantly, I've met Dana, and Dana was... Uh, Dana's actually part of the reason I attend the church I do attend. I actually saw her October two years ago when I was helping Dia move here. And I went to the UU church for the Samhain um, service, and Dana was leading the Samhain service. Um, and so then when I came back the following May, uh, within a couple of weeks, I had um, joined the uh, Pagan Studies group um, in the church, I had started doing door greeting in the church and I had met Dana in the church and Dana actually helped me out quite a bit through all of the drama that has ensued since moving here. Um, so she's been, she's been a pretty amazing friend and she's currently, she's currently giving a hand to another friend who's in a state of homelessness, essentially. Um, she's giving them a place to keep their feet, keep their stuff and, um, get their world around them again. 
So Dana's pretty amazing people. Um, you guys know I deal with depression. Depression has been pretty rough this year. Um, hence why it's November and you're just now getting a blog out of me from September last. Um, it, the healthcare system here sucks and it sucks a lot. Um, I made a phone call finally at the end of June at Dana's insistence. She handed me a number and she says, you will call this. And it was essentially, it was like the nurse's hotline for mental health. And the nurse's hotline helped me figure out what my next step should look like. And I called my medical insurance and my, my, well, my HMO, whatever. I, I called the people that I'm supposed to go see and it took them three months. I believe it was to it. I, I, it, there was a three month lead time on me getting an appointment. And I went to the first appointment thinking it was going to be like the intake, you know, who are you? Where do you come from? Family of origin and all that other happy horse crap. Uh, come to find out the appointment was really just an appointment to see if I could make an appointment. And I'm not kidding. Uh, it was an appointment to see whether or not I actually needed mental health services and whether I could get an appointment for them. Uh, my actual first mental health appointment is the end of November. Now, if you're keeping track here, I called them at the end of June. July, August, September, October, November. It takes five months to get your first mental health appointment. When I was sitting at the last appointment to find out if I could get an appointment, I said this to the woman that I was talking to. And mind you, let me back this up a step. That was the earliest appointment I could get. It's downtown. The earliest appointment I could get for the closest facility to me was end of February. November. December, January, February, eight months to get an appointment at my clinic. Actually, that's not even my clinic. It's just the closest clinic, which is still about five miles away. Um, I have a clinic right there, like half a mile right there. If the trees and the hills weren't in the way, I could see my clinic. It's that close. I can't get anything there. There's no mental health services there. Big, gigantic clinic looks like the front of a prison, but I can't get any services there. Um, where was I going with this? Oh, so I'm sitting in this appointment, and I say to this nice lady, five months, eight months. I said, my God, what would happen if I were in actual, like, real crisis? I'm just kind of in crisis right now. She says, oh, well, we have two emergency rooms that you can go to, and if they're at all properly staffed, they might be able to admit you. Really? I said, this sucks. Um, this sucks a lot. So anyway, I'm going in finally to get a therapist, I think, at the end of November. That's my understanding. I hope it's not just another appointment to find out if I can get an appointment with a therapist. Um, I'm still in the same apartment. I haven't moved. Um, I may look at moving in a few months. I have a 10 month lease because that was the least expensive lease that I could sign on for. Anything more or less than 10 months started getting more expensive, which I don't understand, but yay city life. Um, I have a different car. The fusion got T-boned back in May. So I'm driving around in another car. Uh, it's Pontiac. It's cute. It's not the fusion, though. I miss the fusion. But, uh, you know, Jezebel was good to her word all the way to the end. Um, yeah, she's good to her name. Um, the new one is called Maeve. And she's a sturdy car. So still working for the home health care company. Uh, I am now a full-time status employee which means that I can accrue paid time off and sick pay and all that jazz. Um, I get medical now through the, through the company. <coughs> Excuse me. I've had 401k for a while. I'm sorry. I'm yawning. It's my morning. So I just, I haven't finished doing all the morning things yet. Did a morning thing. Um, yeah. 
So job is going well. I've got a fairly regular schedule now. Like it's it's fairly it's fairly standard. Like my schedule looks about the same week to week to week with little tweaks here and there because appointments or illnesses or you know what have you. Um, I am taking a few days off this weekend. I work through tomorrow and then I'm taking Friday, Saturday, Sunday off because my girlfriend Angie is coming in from, well, she's coming in from not Wisconsin, but she lives in Wisconsin. She's coming in from elsewhere because um, she's got some work she has to do. So she's going to come stay with me for a few days and I'll get to show her around my Cleveland a little. Um, Cleveland and I, I think, are done having our grudge match for a while. Um... In fact, I was talking with another friend the other night, um, and the standard line up until recently had been, well, I'm going to wait out this lease, and at the end of this lease, then I'm going to, you know, beat feet and go elsewhere, maybe out west. Um, I'm going to stay. I'll be staying. Um, I have enough things pulling together, finally, instead of fighting against me. You know, when I moved here, when I moved here, my hope was that I was going to be moving here to two very, very, very good friends and that I would be surrounded by love and that I'd have people that I loved close by, um, that I'd have people that I could have meals with and go out and have coffee with and hang out with. And well, when that folded and kicked my feet out from underneath of me, the problem I was finding was that I wasn't making friends. I wasn't socializing. I wasn't growing as a person. Um, I was very stagnant, um, very lost, and I just didn't know where I was, where I was going. Since then, though, I'm so sorry I keep yawning. Uh, I joined I, I joined a crochet club. Uh, we meet twice a month in one of the libraries, not too far from here. And so I go two Mondays a month. I go and I crochet for like hour and a half, two hours with a group of women, um, because no men have shown up. But I've gone out with a group of women, and we talk about everything under the sun. Like, this last time I was there, one of the younger women and I were talking cross-table. We were diagonal cross from each other um, about our haunt experiences, because she's a pro-haunter, too. And so she was telling me about, I think it's called Seven Levels of Hell or Seven Floors of Hell or something like that. And I didn't get to any haunts this year again, because I don't want to go alone. It's no fun alone. Um... But it's not too far from me. It's it's within like five, six miles of here, I think. And uh, so we were kind of like talking haunt and the rest of the table was just looking at us like, what's wrong with you people? I love making children cry. Yeah, well, I love making them pee. What's wrong with you people? <laughs> um, we've talked about the passing of parents. We've talked about the raising of children. Uh, we talk about favorite recipes, favorite patterns, the what the hell is wrong with this world. We talk about religion and a little bit on politics, but you got to be careful with politics, you know. And, and we talk about people in our lives and loves and losses and everything. And it's it's really nice because you you just slowly kind of get to know the different people in the group. And there's a good variety of women in there. I think the one I was talking to the other night, I think might be in her maybe her mid-twenties, and I believe I've seen women in there that are in their late 60s, early 70s. Um, so it's a good variety, and we don't all look the same either. You know, we've got people who look very, um, very unusual. We have people who look very normal. We've got retirees. We've got old hippies. We got, I mean, we've got a little bit of everything. It's great. Um, at the same library, they've started a coloring night. That's also on a Monday. So Three Mondays out of the month, I go to this library and I sit with, with people. I sit with different women. The coloring group has a whole other group of women and none of them, none of them cross contaminate except me. Um, and we sit and we talk about church and we talk about craft supplies and we talk about crafting and, you know, all kinds of things. So it's really cool. Um, so socializing is coming along. Um, I'm actually having a small dinner party Saturday night where I get to introduce Angie to some of my Ohio friends. I've actually got three of my Ohio friends coming over. Um, and I'm really excited about that because I can actually say now I have three Ohio friends that I feel very comfortable inviting to my home and feeding and introducing to my Wisconsin people. Um, 
on Halloween, one of my Ohio friends and I went to one of my church people's homes because she was hosting our Samhain party. And so I'm finally kind of, I'm finally kind of, um, allowing myself to be seen and be known a little bit by the little, by the little pagan studies group. Um, I've been very with them and it has nothing to do with them. They're a great group of people and they're all very solid people. They're people who are gainfully employed. They're people who are sane. They're people who are kind and smart. Um, I'm the broken one. I'm the one that's looking at them and going, oh yeah, it's a group of pagans and we all know what happens with group of pagans. Yeah, groups of pagans very quickly drag me into the middle, get me to do a whole bunch of work and then stomp on me and tell me how I'm wrong. I don't like groups of pagans. This group of pagans has not done that. This group of pagans has rolled with every little bit of emotional drama I've brought with me. Um, in fact, a lot of times I think I'm the nuts one in the group. And they're good about that. They're they're good about that. They let me they let me stand up and teach when I'm when I'm comfortable doing so, <clears throat> which is more times than not. Um, they let me lay back in the shadows when I'm not comfortable with it, uh, which isn't as frequent. It's becoming less and less frequent, which is nice. Um, so it's a good group of people. They, they seem to really be interested in the things that I choose to, um, present and teach. They ask questions, you know, um, and they present and they present good things too. They present things that I don't know, which is a nice change. It's really, it's really a wonderful thing when I can go to a pagan studies group and actually learn something and not just be the teacher all the time. You know, and so I've got these two new friends that I've been bringing to the group, these two new guys that I've been bringing to the group. So the group is starting to grow and shift. And that's kind of the purpose of the group is to, you know, they were always developed as a study group, not as a coven or a circle or, you know, um, we do ritual together, but we do a very open ended ritual that is, um, um, it's accepting of all the folks that are in there because the group of folks that are in there are so varied. We have traditionalists, we have eclectics, we even have people of other faiths that are sitting in the group with us because they're interested because it's a study group. Um, so with the study group, we've been presenting four of the major rituals um, over the last year. We just finished our fourth one. We made a commitment to four. We just finished our fourth one with Samhain and we did that uh, Tuesday, yeah, last Tuesday. Um, in which we did the what what's called the November Death Ritual, uh, and I got to portray death, which is the first time I've done anything like aspecting or embodying since Dia and I did the Anana and Arishkagol ritual, um, maybe four years ago over Samhain as well, and it actually was a very powerful ritual for me, even as even as a um, I don't want to say a participant because I wasn't a participant in the sense that everybody else was, but it was a very powerful ritual for me. What I felt was that spiritually, I got a lot of really good messages, some painful ones that I didn't, I wasn't ready to hear, but that needed to be heard, but it was a very good ritual. Um, I'm teaching Sunday school in church. So church is going well too. Um, I'm helping. I'm part of a four person team. This is how they do it. They take, um, usually two grades, we have seventh and eighth grade, and they put four adults to each grade group, and those four adults trade off week to week so that you really only are committed to two weeks, one to teach and one to assist. Um, and so what this particular age group studies is they do world religions. So we spend week one learning the basics about the religion. We spend week two talking about kind of the function of the religion. We spend week three act at a uh, at a facility, you know, at a church or a temple or a synagogue where we can see how the religion actually like what is what a service looks like. And then we spend week four doing kind of our wrap up our our decompress. Um, so we just had Christianity um, and they went to an Episcopalian church and I ended up not going to the church. I had some other things going on that weekend. That was actually my birthday weekend. This month we're talking about Judaism and my week to teach is actually the Sunday that we're supposed to go to a synagogue. 
So I'm kind of excited about that. I've always wanted to um, experience a Jewish synagogue. Um, I have once, and it was for a bar mitzvah. But I'd like to see, I know on a Sunday I'm not probably going to see much because I do believe that in Judaism they celebrate on Saturday nights. So I may not get to see much. It may just be a meet and greet kind of thing where we maybe get a tour. <clears throat> um, so, okay, so job is going well. I've gotten, I've gotten my full-time status. Um, pagan life is going well. I get to study and learn. Church life is going well. I'm helping out with Sunday school. Um, home life is going okay. Bills are still really difficult because um, although I have full-time status, um, I'm still just, just barely making what it takes to get by. And if anything ever hiccups in my life, it throws that whole balance off. So any given month, I'm in fear of um, not being able to pay my rent or not being able to pay my utilities or my cable or not being able to eat or put gas in my car um, or get cat food or litter. Any given month, something happens, like a client will go down for a couple of days or I'll be sick or something happens. A bill comes up that I don't expect, like, you know, like when my car tags came up. Um, so I guess, you know, home life is, is dicey. Financial life is dicey. Home life is fine. I just got to like clean up my crap. I have so much crap here. I'm hoping through now, from now through the end of the year, I think I'm just going to start picking up a cart and just like grabbing boxes of things, pulling out the five items in each box that I really, really, really want to keep and throwing the whole rest of it away because I can't seem to get myself to go to Goodwill. I can't seem to put my stuff up on eBay. I really do think it's just a case of take it out to the dumpsters, but set it high so people can dig through it um, so that it maybe doesn't all go straight to a landfill. Um, in that in that next weekend, I think the, the piano is going to go to the dumpster because I can't justify the cost to repair it. Um, and I don't have the heart to put it up on like Facebook marketplace and try to sell a broken ass keyboard. Um, so I have a friend, I think I'm going to have help me take it out because he's tall, he's strong. So, um, what else? I know there's some of you out there going dating, dating. Is there dating? We're not going to talk about that. Mm, there has been some dating. There has been some uh, very unsuccessful dating. <laughs> um, mm, I tell you what, um, I'm 44 now. I had my birthday f four weeks ago, three weeks ago, three weeks ago. Dating has changed so much, so much. Even the like... Even like the, the blind dating scene has changed so much. Like when Dan and I met, Dan and I met through a newspaper. We met through a personals ad. Um, now it's all dating sites and dating sites suck. Dating sites suck. I don't care if you're paying for them or not. Dating sites suck. I would say that one in 25 people carries on more than three exchanges of conversation with you. And of that one, I'd say one in five are worth having more than three exchanges with. Um, I have been out on dates with men who have decided that kissing and groping are okay on a first date. They're not for me. Um, I had one guy had me backed up against a car and I had to threaten to rip parts of his anatomy off and shove them down his throat. And then I actually ended up getting my car door open sliding between my car door and my car and shoving him with my door before he got the hint. And then I had to block him eight ways from Sunday. Um, I had one gentleman that I dated that like all he'd ever talk about was work and the same six stories about work. That's all he'd ever talk about and how smart he is. Another guy who talked about all, all he talked about was how smart he was. 
Um, so dating is dicey. However, I do have somebody that I am seeing on a fairly regular basis that um, it's a really nice guy. Met him on a, I met him down on a street corner downtown. I met him downtown. Um, completely out of the blue. Nice guy. Um, totally not my normal type. Um, however, he is very kind, very sweet, um, very protective of me, which is sweet, very sweet. Um, I don't know. Let's see where it goes. It is what it is. Um, I have, I have no desire to like tie myself down. Um, yeah, Let's see where it goes. Um, what else do I know? I've lost, uh, oh, excuse me. I had lost 40 pounds since moving here. I've put about 10 of those back on. I'm starting to lose that 10 again. Um, so there's that. Um, I am off of all of my medications at the moment. Um, part of that is because when I get depressed, I kind of stop taking my meds. Um, none of which are, are like, you know, psychotropics or anything. None of them deal with like mental health. Um, it's like cholesterol and blood pressure and diabetes, you know, things that aren't really as important as mental health. So I'm off my meds again. I am still taking my Flonase because I can't function without it. Um, especially now with these little critters running amok. Um, and the problem with getting off of it is I refuse to go back to my primary because I cannot stand my primary physician. And I am so overwhelmed by the process of getting a new primary, training myself a new doctor to not look at me the first time and go, you're fat and that's all your problems. Really? Really? I have allergies because I'm fat? I have carpal tunnel because I'm fat? Um... So I'm really not looking forward to training a new doctor, but at some point here I need to just bite the bullet, go through the list, blindly pick another name, because nobody that I know is in my health system. They're all in a different health system. Um, and go for it. And just get a new primary, because my other primary is doing bumpkiss for me. Um, so health-wise, I mean, I guess that's where I'm at. I feel okay. I mean, I, I don't feel like I'm going to drop dead of a heart attack anytime soon. Um, the last couple of, of uh, last couple of months of proper summer, I've actually been doing a lot of walking um, with this one friend of mine um, because he likes parks and I like parks, and we'd go hit the trails, you know, just go hike for a while. But uh, yeah, now that winter's starting to finally, you know, show its head a little bit. Everybody's running around in parkas, and I'm still out in a t-shirt. You know, it's it's 30, 40 degrees outside. It's not cold yet. Shh, talk to me when it's, you know, 20 below. Um, yeah, so I got to get a new primary set up. I have a table full of plants I have to transplant, hopefully, before Angie gets here tomorrow night, because I don't know where we're going to eat dinner if I don't. That whole table's full of plants. Um, is that all I know? I think that's all I know. I think that's it. So I just, you know, I've been thinking the last couple of weeks about doing a video and kind of catching you guys up because I know you haven't heard from me in a while and I see new people subscribing and, you know, and I think about the folks who had subscribed and, you know, all that jazz. But, um, yeah, things have been kind of rocky here this year. It's been, it's been weird, but things have also been getting really good here. Um, so, yeah, I think Ohio and I are done having our grudge match. I think it's a good thing. So with that, I'm, um, I'm going to let y'all go. And, uh, you know, I hope you all have a good day. We got Thanksgiving coming up. I'm going to try and do, I'm going to try and do more blogs. I'd like to say I'm going to do a video a week now, but I know the minute I say that I'm going to just cut my own throat on, on holding up to that responsibility because that's, you know, that's one more thing I have to try and, and squeeze into my life when I'm already like just starting to kind of get my head just above water a little bit. Like I feel like I've been swimming at this level. And I feel like right now I'm about maybe here, maybe, maybe here. <laughs>
you know, sniff a little bit of water. So I don't want to make a commitment to I will be on here X amount of times, but I am going to try and do this a little more often. So um, it's good. It's uh, good putting my face in front of you guys again. I've missed doing this. And, uh, you know, as always, have uh, have a wonderful week. Love each other. Be grateful for what you have. Find the gifts in the hardships that life hands you. Uh, love you all. See you again soon.